In today's video, we are going to be discussing how stress is making us fat. I'm going to be discussing with you in this video what the basis, the physiological basis of all of this, what happens when we are in states of continuous long-term or as we call as chronic stress and then I will discuss with you few simple strategies. Broadly speaking, they will be placed under three broad categories which we will be talking about towards the second half of this video. If I told you that we all need stress, how would you feel? See, the thing is, we allocate stress as something negative. We give it a negative connotation, which means that, you know, stress means it must be bad. Well, that's not true, actually. We all need a certain degree of what we call as healthy stress to function. If you didn't have stress, you would not make an effort to get out of the bed and go to work or do things that you do. So if you look at this graph over here, in the middle half, which is called the major standard deviation, that is called optimal stress. That is where if stress falls in between that category, that is good stress, which is what allows us to go have a drive, uh, do things, do the things that we do, go for our work uh, and even get up in the middle of the night to look after a child that may be crying. You know, that's a kind of stress. We don't want to do it, but we still get ahead and do it because there is something that drives us. Now, when the stress goes to extremes, which is, you know, the shaded area in red and blue on either side, if it is, it goes too much over, well, it leads to anxiety, worry, panic and those kind of emotions. And if there is no stress at all, if there is no drive, well, we call that state as depression. So friends, what we need to do is we need to be able to manage our stress better. And that's the most important message that we need to take away from this video because stress is there, the stress response, which is a physiological response is there just to do two things. It is meant to keep us safe, which means if there is any threat or danger in our environment, we have the urge to run away from it or fight it. And the other aim of the stress response is to keep us comfortable, which means if we get into a room which is really cold, well, our metabolic rate goes up to bring the temperature of the body up so that we are in a as optimal comfort temperature range as we can be. So that's just one of the examples. Now let's look at it what happens when we have the stress response in an acute setting and in a chronic setting. And I'll explain that in a moment because these are fairly medical terms, but acute means short term. When there is a short term stress, the body has this fight or flight response and we either fight it or we flight or run away from it. You know? So that's fairly understandable. Just like a, a tiger is chasing a deer, when the deer runs away from the tiger and is successful in escaping and the tiger is not able to catch it, well, the deer is back to grazing, the stress response is gone. However, if the stress response is chronic, which means it is ongoing, that tiger hasn't gone away, it is still looming around. And that tiger for us, for you and I, could be negative emotions such as shame, guilt, anger, fear, or anxiety, or if we are struggling with weight issues already, it could be that fear of our low self-esteem, our perception by the society, which is why we go into dieting. Dieting, and I've discussed this in a separate video, is not a good long-term strategy for weight loss. Dieting builds a lot of stress in the body. And friends, what chronic stress does is three key things. And this is crucial to understand. It plays or it mucks up with our hormones. Two key hormones that I discuss, and there are several others, but the two key hormones that you need to know about is, one is cortisol. Cortisol is the stress hormone produced by the adrenal glands. And what it does is, it actually causes preferential deposition of fat in the middle part of the abdomen, in the visceral fat. It leads to a condition called as fatty liver which I've discussed separately in another video. But the point is the cortisol is the key culprit. Second hormone is that of insulin. Insulin is something that is required for regulation of blood sugar levels. 
Now, when the insulin levels go up and down, what happens is it is pushing more sugar into the cells. That means you have got low sugar in the blood because most of it has been pushed into the cells. And what you need is you need a sugar kick. So that's why sugar helps you overcome stress. But what insulin does when it is chronically high, it causes our hunger to go up as well. Because again, insulin is a is an anabolic hormone, which means it builds you up because it improves your supplies of energy. That's what it is meant to do. And that insulin, when people come to me saying they are constantly hungry, they could eat a whole pizza and still be hungry. Well, the reason is the insulin levels are high and we check that and we find it on people who are having ongoing weight issues that their insulin levels are high. Second thing that chronic or long-term stress does to you is it mucks up with your gut lining. The inner lining of the gut is very delicate. We know from centuries that people who are stressed out, who are anxious, they get stomach ulcers. Well, stomach ulcers form because the lining becomes weak and broken down. That is what sets inflammation. Even conditions like ulcerative colitis have got a association with the individual's mental makeup, such as anxiety, stress levels, and those those sort of states. The third thing that chronic stress level does is it limits or reduces your immunity, your immune response. And that is what lay, leads for bad bugs to flourish in the gut, causing a state called as dysbiosis. Dysbiosis is nothing else but the balance between the healthy and the bad gut uh, bacteria goes out of whack. We all have good bacteria and we need the bad bacteria to keep the good bacteria on their toes. So it's a very fine 80-20 balance, 80 good, 20 bad. We need the bad as much as we need the good. But what happens is when that balance goes astray, well, the bad bacteria take over, it starts to create havoc in the system. And the first thing that it affects is your immunity. You're just more prone to infections. You're just more prone to catch allergies, uh, catch you know bugs, and you develop allergies. Allergies are nothing else, but they are really an immune response. What happens because of all these three conditions is ongoing wear and tear. The body can repair, regenerate and regrow the three R's up to a certain limit. But after then, the fourth R, which is the reserve, goes down and what it need, leads to is disease, discomfort and disintegration, the three D's. And that's what starts to happen, friends, is that it leads to fatty liver, which is basically deposition of fat in the middle part of the abdomen, which is the unhealthy fat, which is related to heart disease, stroke and all of that. It also leads to a high cholesterol level. It also increases the individual's blood pressure and very importantly, leads to an increased risk of type 2 diabetes and in males specifically leads to obstructive sleep apnea. And that is where the problem lies because unless you understand this association between how stress is driving things, you will always keep scratching on the surface. Because what happens, let's look at this a little bit further. When the chronic stress response becomes like a long-term thing, there are these three things that are still playing out. The fight, the flight, and the freeze. All right, let's see what happens in the fight basket. When you're stressed on a long-term basis, you are trying to fight things. And that is an emotional reaction. Emotional reaction means you're in a bad mood. You had a bad day at work, you had an argument with your spouse or your best friend, whatever it may be. You're just in a bad mood. You try and make up for the bad mood with bad food. It's like chocolates and ice creams. You never go for a salad when you're in a bad mood. Okay, let's be honest about it. When you're fixing things with bad foods, what happens is it leaves you with guilt afterwards after you've realized that oh my god i finished the whole packet of chips and i'm still in a bad mood well it leaves you with guilt all right and that guilt then leads to further bad mood so you are going down this negative vicious cycle
And we'll talk about it, what we can do in a moment. But that is the fight response. The flight response is you just dissociate yourself with things. So you go to the television, you go to your social media feed, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, in order to distract yourself from whatever you're going through. And the third possible outcome is you freeze. Freeze means you just numb yourself. Numbing yourself means that you go for a binge of drink or alcohol, you smoke, people go for a sugar kick. Sugar, by the way, is an addicting drug as well. Let's be honest, food is a drug and food can be addicting. In fact, studies have been done that show that food and sugar have an equivalent addiction potential to that of marijuana. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please share it with your friends and anyone who can benefit from it. Do like it and do subscribe to my channel to keep updated with forthcoming videos. Thank you and take care.